One of the particularly cool parts about the Wastelanders DLC for Fallout 76 is it really isn't just one thing. It adds in a lot of new content, and even outside of the main story, which I posted my predominant first impressions and just overview of the DLC slash initial review yesterday if you guys want to check that out. Also, shameless plug for my merch store, which is linked in the description. I'm going to have a few new additions in the coming week, so some of the designs may be changing, but if you haven't checked it out, it is a great way to support the channel. But one of the major features of Wastelanders that hopefully I can make a little bit more clear for you are companions, otherwise known as allies. Companions in Wastelanders work differently. No longer will they follow you everywhere, acting as death fodder and a bunch of extra carry weight, but rather they're going to be setting up shop at your camp now, and you can have one active at a time. Due to these changes, Bethesda has renamed them to allies. In this video, what I'm going to do is give you a rundown of all five of these, how you can find them and specifically where you can find them, a little bit of a backstory as to who they are and maybe if you're even interested in finding them, and a breakdown of the three different types. Many people know about the four companions, two major, two minor, but there actually is a fifth one that I did find for this video quite painstakingly. I'll give you some tips on how you could find this one for yourself, especially because it is fairly rare right now, so you could kind of show it off to your friends. Many of you watching the new Wastelanders content I've been putting out aren't subscribed, so I do encourage you to get subscribed, there's a lot more on the way. But otherwise first, let's break down the types of companions in Wastelanders. The big ones are going to be the two named companions, Sophia and Beckett. Each of these two separate companions will have their own full questline. Some of this before they settle up at your camp, some of it after they settle up at your camp. The way to get these two is actually pretty easy. You just have to go to a certain region of the map and you will get the quest proc automatically. Sophia is located in the mire, but if you're in the Savage Divide, you probably will also get this to proc and perhaps even at the edge of the Cranberry Bog. Her more specific location it's going to be an abandoned bunker. After getting the quest, you could travel here and find an injured Sophia. And the very interesting and unique thing about Sophia was she was actually an astronaut. You find out immediately she's been in cryo sleep for years. She just recently crash landed in Appalachia, but has no idea about the great war and destruction that the region finds itself in. You'll have to do a few initial quests for her. She herself is very injured, so that's justification as to why you're going to her crash site and picking up some of the leftover pieces of what happened before. And after a few short quests like this, you could have her set up at your camp. The justification for this is she needs an advanced computer and more processing power, so that is the camp item you'll place down for Sophia. From there, you continue with her main story, which first focuses on finding what happened to the rest of her crew, but there's also an additional level of mystery here as you try and figure out what exactly is going on with these mysterious headaches, what happened in space with Sophia. On the other side of the block, you do have Beckett, who is located in the Ash Heap region. This is another one, you just get the quest by being in this region or near it. He is more specifically located at the Rollins Labor Camp. As you roll up to the Rollins Labor Camp, you'll find that it actually is a Blood Eagles location. And the backstory here is Beckett is currently imprisoned by the Blood Eagles, being a former Blood Eagle himself. To put it simply, view the Blood Eagles as like the Raider Raiders, not the ally Raiders that you could side with in Fall 76, more like the raiders you had in Fallout 4, just those generic bad guys. His intro quest is very simple, you're literally just breaking him out of the cell and getting him some of his stuff, and then he'll set up his bar back at your camp, as well as giving you a first drink for free. From there, Beckett's main story and the quests you'll be doing for him really involve the Blood Eagles and getting revenge on them, with this quest giving you a bit more lore or backstory around that faction. Upon completion of both Beckett's and Sophia's quests, you do get a unique item reward, a legendary weapon, and throughout them there are a few choices you get to make along the way, although be warned, something about these quests, they're very grindy and very long. A common theme you'll see if you're trying to just rush through it is it's going to more or less be, hey, I needed this. Okay, now you fast travel somewhere, literally get that item, go back, and then basically do that 12 times as you gradually build up your reputation with that companion. And that's not to say the story isn't interesting. The actual lore, companion interactions, and some of the other things that happen along the way genuinely had me intrigued. But the gameplay aspect is very simple. It is basically go here, get this, come back, do it again. Now at some points there was a bit more of a challenge, but it wasn't always quest specific. Actually, it was almost never quest specific. You were just at an existing Fallout 76 location having to get into some obscure part of it. And it is several hours of content. It does take a decent amount of time, especially if you're a lower level. From a writing perspective, I thought it was really interesting, but from a gameplay perspective, left a bit to be desired. You also are only able to have one of these companions available at a given time. You basically just have to switch the camp item. Frustratingly, they have to not be using the camp item. So sometimes you have to kind of try and get them off of it somehow, but it does save your progress. 
progress. So I was sometimes just switching between doing quests for Sophia, then do some for Beckett, then some of the other ones. Although with Beckett and Sophia, you actually can romance them. This basically just involves having flirt lines that you can pick as you do some of their quests. As you flirt with them more and more and eventually finish their quests, you will kind of be in love. You actually have a moment where you can profess your love to that person. It's really simple, more so like, hey, just checking a box like, oh yeah, we have romanceable companions. It's not really a huge part of them though. They'll just make some comments here or there and technically you could break up with them if you wanted to. After you finish Beckett and Sophia's main quest, you will have a daily repeatable quest. This is pretty interesting because at least on the first time of doing this, whether it be Beckett or Sophia's, it will be a guaranteed legendary spawn. Just about everyone I've talked to after doing the first daily repeatable quest for one of these companions got a legendary item and typically a fairly high tier one. It wasn't like the spawn that an enemy, it was an actual quest reward for finishing this. But it seems like you could only do one companion daily quest per day. So if you want to do Sophia's, you could do that, but then you can't do Beckett's and you can't do the minor companion daily quest. You have to pick one per day. When it comes to the main quest, you could do those all day long though. For the next category of companion, and this is the rare one, we do have the Roman companion, which there is one of, that with the Settler Wanderer. A lot of people are really struggling to find this particular companion because, well, it's a random encounter. All the other companions in this video are fixed spawns. You get to a certain place, you do a certain thing, you could get them. The Settler Wanderer, conversely, isn't a fixed spawn. It'll just pop up somewhere. It seems like one of the spawns that's fairly easy to grind out and just serve hop to consistently have new things spawn there is the Moonshiner Shack just outside of Vault 76, although that's not actually where I found this one. Where I found it was just south of Slocum's Joe. Here's the exact location, you could try and server hop to get it, but there are numerous other locations all across the map. And in fact, the reason I got this one was because somebody else found it, told me, and then I was able to join their server and get it for myself. A shout out to these two because they're a large part as to why I could post this video today. Although once you actually do find her, it's easy. You just ask her to come be at your camp, there's no skill checks even available. The Settler Wanderer herself is basically just a musician. When you actually find her, she'll oftentimes be playing an instrument or humming or something. The camp item you'll place down is a guitar plus a chair. And something really unique about this one is, for some reason, she's actually on a different daily quest cycle. So you could do one daily quest for the two major and two minor companions, plus this companion's daily quest. The quests themselves are somewhat randomized. You might be saving a settler. For me, I was just taking down one ghoul. It's very simple. You get a few miscellaneous rewards as well as some legendary script, typically. The last two minor companions are faction specific and as such may have a bit more of a barrier to entry to actually recruiting them. Firstly, you have the settler for Rager. This is going to be on the under part of the settler base at Foundation. He'll typically be wandering around in this general area. You'll see him. He's named settler for Rager or just for Rager. But to successfully recruit this one, it seems like like you have to pass either a special check or a skill check. One of the easy ones is if you already beat the main story and you are cooperative with both of the factions, that is the skill check for these. The character himself was a past famous author, that's actually what a lot of the skill checks are around. Once he's back at your base, he kind of is a crossover between an author and an older dude. He'll make funny jokes like, pull my finger, actually that's all he said and asked why I didn't have friends. Which again, out of these four companions, you could only do one daily quest per day, with the wanderer being separate, she also has has one daily quest per day, but it's just for her. So if the minor ones don't have a daily quest, there's no real dialogue. They'll just say little lines, make funny jokes, and wander about your camp. On the other side of things, you also do have the Raider Punk. Similarly, he'll be located on the interior underground part of Crater. Just go down the stairs to the more exposed dirt part and you'll see him pretty quickly. He's a little bit different in that he is a raider but actually wanted to start a radio station. And that's the main reason he wants to join you to get out of there and actually do some stuff with radio, which is what you place down as a camp object. He's another pretty simple one. He won't have dialogue unless he actually has an available daily quest. But overall, yeah, that is a look at the companions or allies you can get in Fallout 76's Wastelanders DLC. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful, especially with that rare Roman companion. I do hope some of you will be able to find her as a result of this or maybe even just made aware of her existence. For a while, it was mentioned how there were actually four companions, so that fifth one wasn't really known about. As far as my overall impressions of these companions, the two named ones are pretty cool. Their quests, or how you do their quests, could definitely use a bit of an upgrade, but Sophia's story in particular really brought you in. You start to care about her, and we're invested in some of the characters. Similar to 76, with those main character stories, 
there was choices that were hard, but there wasn't really any consequence. Like you choose to let someone live or die and it didn't really matter. It's not like there was a huge difference depending which way you went on those. And overall, I think they're cool, a cool concept in general, but something they kind of just could have done better. There's a lot of characters you encountered in the main story that you got invested with that I think would have just made better allies. Like for me at least, I think it would have been a lot cooler if you could get Lou or Penny as allies. I won't give spoilers, but once you play the Settler and Raider stories, you'll know why. Both of them are a little bit more unique or distinctive and I think would have fit really well with this system. After you beat the game, you could actually recruit them and maybe have a few quests for each of them. But overall, the name companion quest lines are definitely a lot of fun and they without a doubt are interesting stories that you probably should experience. Either way though, that's going to wrap it up for this one. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later. Well, my mom used to do this before she got sick.